Hey guys, this is not one of my typical tutorial videos and serves two main purposes instead. The first one is since I keep getting asked what my PC specs are, I wanted to show you what I upgraded to and what my reasons were. And the second one is that it's that time of the year where some of you may want to upgrade your PC and I wanted to give you an overview of what the system requirements of some of the most popular AI tools are and also give you recommendation for cheap PC components or a pre-built PC that will be able to run anything AI decently. By the way, there is no paid promotion in this video and this PC is what I generally think is a great entry-level PC for using AI tools. Before looking at the most relevant PC parts, we will look at three use cases, generating AI images, generating AI audio, including voice cloning and the use of chatbots and see what kind of requirements they have. For Automatic 11.11, the official minimum requirements are 4GB of VRAM and even though there are some good optimizations for low VRAM cards, you will end up with limited functionality. So these specs should be just enough to generate images. With a bit more system RAM and 12GB of VRAM, you can use all functions, including the training of models or using ControlNet with high-res fix. So you can create some cool things with the QR Monster ControlNet models. To use AI voice cloning, you need at least 8GB of VRAM to train the voice models, while cloning your voice in real time can run on a CPU alone with a bit of delay. For generating sound effects and music, the official documentation states that you need 16GB of VRAM for generating with the medium models. However, it also seems to work fine with cards having just 12GB of VRAM. With a more advanced GPU, you can even run the largest models, train your own models faster and have a faster voice conversion. For running small uncensored chatbots locally, you don't need a lot of VRAM or RAM, but these smaller models cannot compare to something like ChatGBT. The larger models, however, come close to GBT but require a lot of VRAM. There are optimized models, though, that allow you to run the larger models on hardware that they normally would not run on, which will result in longer response times from the AI. So for chatbots, clearly, the more VRAM you have, the better. And even the workstation GPUs don't have enough to run the largest models directly without any optimizations. So maybe you also have additional use cases for your PC, but in my case, besides using AI tools, I also need my PC for work, which includes using Blender, Unreal Engine, and other software development tools. And unlike the AI tools, all of this development software can be quite demanding, not only on the GPU, but also on the CPU. And this is the 7-year-old PC that I had to replace badly. The 8GB GPU wasn't cutting it anymore for AI, and the development tools I used for work needed both a better GPU and a better CPU. Next, let's look at the most relevant parts in a PC, and we will start with the most important one by far for running AI tools, and that is the GPU. Even though some AI tools work with AMD cards too, some others do not, which is why I will always recommend getting an NVIDIA card. They also have a great development architecture for parallel computing called CUDA. So besides the VRAM of the GPU, the number of CUDA cores is also quite important. So here are two GPUs with a huge difference in price. On the left is the RTX 3060 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. And this is what I'd say is the minimum GPU to be able to use most AI tools with decent performance and without any major limitations. And the GPU on the right is the best non-workstation GPU that you can currently get. Obviously any Nvidia GPU with specs of in between those two cards will work great too. But if you decide to get the RDX 4090, you need to keep in mind that the card is absolutely huge. So it takes up a lot of space and needs a GPU holder which you can see here. It was included in the version of the 4090 that I got. And another thing to consider is this plug. You need to make sure to have it plugged in all the way and that you don't bend it here. In the cable that I have, this part is taped, but they keep improving this connector so yours could look differently. No matter which cable you have, if you bend it here like this, then you should be fine. Next up is the CPU, and while faster is always better for AI tools, there's no real need for a super fast CPU with many cores, so the Intel i5-12600K is a good CPU that along with a decent GPU will handle anything AI nicely. If you want to do 3D development on the PC, then you may want to invest a bit more to get the i9-13900KF. 
In that case, you will want a water cooling system for the CPU. But the good thing is that nowadays you can get all-in-one liquid cooling that is super easy to install. Next up is storage and I did some testing in Automatic 11.11 to see if there is a difference between one of the slowest SSDs and one of the fastest ones. And while the difference is much smaller than expected, it still can be noticeable if you use stable diffusion a lot. For example, launching the tool, generating images and loading the F222 model is only slightly faster but the difference in speed became noticeable when I loaded the SDXL model. However, the modern NVMe SSDs are much faster than the old one I used for the comparison and you can get one with decent speeds for 50 bucks and the 1111 performance differences between those two should not be noticeable. Keep in mind that if you use a lot of different AI tools and models then you will need a lot of disk space but you don't need to get the faster SSD if you only want to use it for AI. So here are PC components that will allow you to run most AI tools with pretty decent performance for quite a cheap price. At the time I did the video, the total price was below 1000, but you can get a pre-built PC with similar specs for just a bit more. And this is the PC that I am using. Again, keep in mind that I'm also using it for work and AI tools will not benefit from some of the components. For example, the fast RAM that I am using. The total cost of the components was about 3,900 and this pre-built PC has specs that are very, very similar. It has slower RAM, a slower SSD and a GPU from a different vendor, but it has a slightly better CPU and costs $50 less. In case you are wondering about the pros and cons of pre-built PCs, well, you obviously need no PC building skills or need to spend any time learning it. That includes making sure that the components are compatible with each other, but it is usually a bit more expensive for the exact same components and you cannot customize the PC according to your own needs. So as you saw in this video, the speed of the SSD only makes a very small difference, just like the CPU. The GPU is what matters. And even though you cannot have enough VRAM in your GPU, 12 GB is fine for most AI tools. And for $1,000, you can get a nice entry-level PC for using AI locally. However, this PC is not ideal for local chatbots, but even workstation GPUs with 42 GB cannot run all models directly. For 3900 you can get a PC that has the best CPU and best consumer GPU, which will also let you run very hardware-hungry 3D development tools. And as the price difference between a pre-built PC and buying the components separately is very small, you only need to build one yourself if you really want to. And another issue we haven't talked about is the question, why should you even use the AI tools locally? And that is quite easy to answer. You obviously have higher running costs, when using the tools online, where you have to usually pay for credits for being able to keep using the tools. New features or tools might not always get added right away, depending on which service you're using. And you only get access to censored chatbots if you're using ChatGBT, Bing or Bard. The big benefit though is that you don't have to worry about PC hardware and everything should be easier to set up compared to doing it locally on your own PC. Locally, you don't have any running costs besides your energy bill and you can use everything as long and often as you want. Everything is a bit more customizable and you get access to uncensored chatbots. One last argument for upgrading or building a local machine for AI is that you can also use it for gaming, which has had some cool graphical improvements over the past years like ray tracing or path tracing that you will also be able to enjoy with a decent modern GPU. Thank you for watching and even though not an AI tutorial, I hope this special video was useful to you if you learned something new. I'd appreciate it if you liked or shared the video and I'll see you next time.